Hey everyone, welcome to the Single Player Experience Podcast, the perfect podcast for single player gamers to learn about good single player games to play, and also some other dope people who are creating those single player games. Joining me today is the magnificent creator behind one of my most anticipated games coming out of PAX East. I, I got hands on with this. I actually got to speak a little bit to some of the team around PAX East time. And, you know, I had a pretty good impression coming out of it. So good, in fact, that I had to have them on the show to do an exclusive episode about this game. So joining me today is the one, the only Andrew from Act Zero Games. Andrew, how you doing today? Hey, so I'm pretty excited. It's going to be like my first podcast in English ever. So I'm a little bit stressed, but I suppose it's <laughs> going to be fine. Your English is really good. Your English is really good. So Andrew, for people yes. who don't know you, can you introduce yourself to the audience? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm a, a, a writer from Poland. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I graduated from a Wuch Film School in a screenwriting department. And for many years, I was, uh, uh, I was, my job was like writing for movies and for TV series. I, I work with, uh, with, with, for example, with, with Netflix and in other writers' rooms uh, with the movie industry. But uh, for last like seven, maybe eight years, I've got this idea to start uh, changing the, the, the industry from movie to, to game dev. And uh, the game I made together with uh, Act Zero team is going to be our first game. It, it was a super long struggle to make this game uh, even possible to, to develop because oh, it's, it was not an uh, easy topic we choose for the first game. Yeah, yeah. It's, it has a little bit of a political overtone to it. But I think that adds to the intrigue and adds to the realism of this game because, like, you know, there are a lot of things going on in the world, especially here in America, that we don't necessarily understand about, like, the political system in Europe and what's going on over there. So this is kind of like a cool insight to, a like, a very cool perspective of that. So I want to ask you, Andrew, like, you, you mentioned your transition from movies, um, from movies and, and screenwriting to game development and game writing. What was that transition like for you? So at the beginning, it was like 2014, and uh, it was the year when the the game uh, This War of Mine uh, has its premiere, and it inspired me a lot because this game make me made me realize that games has already matured enough to uh, to speak uh, to tell the ambitious stories. Mm -hmm. And it's not only about entertainment, but also about, it's a part of the culture, yeah, of the high culture. So that was the moment when I, I decided that I want to be a part in this gaming revolution, which uh, I was witnessing. And um, yeah, and I sent the CVs uh, <laughs> to all the major companies in Poland, like CD Projekt Red and other big companies. Mm -hmm. And uh and they didn't want to hire me so at that moment because i have no experience in writing for games i've got i was just freshly graduated from the wood film school mm -hmm. and um, so i i thought that okay nobody wants me so maybe i will make my own game and i will make my own company to produce my own game and at that moment i i didn't know that it would took so much time <laughs> to develop the skill of you know obtaining uh a budget for a game or uh, running a studio and all the other stuff that which is not connected with writing but you have to do it if you want to make your game on your own and uh, yeah at the beginning I uh, I started uh, I because I know nothing about game dev at that moment mm -hmm. so I wanted to to learn from scratch so I I found a, a very simple job of being a QA tester of uh, uh, Witcher 3 uh, it's in some other major company and after like three maybe four months working there I find some people who also hated this, this job <laughs> and got some uh, higher uh, ambitious and uh, one of them uh, was Maciej Stańczyk he 
he won he wanted he wanted to be a game designer at that time and now he is one and uh, he's like my business partner right now uh, we founded uh, our company x0 together and we together made made this game yeah but we met like up at the bottom of the <laughs> uh like as a as a as a testers yeah of the the super big Witcher 3 game that is really cool. So, you know, it it's that kind of like that scrappy underdog story of like, you know, of people rising and sort of like living, trying to live out their dream despite being told no several different times, you know, like that's really inspirational. I want to ask you, though. Um, So you were testing out, you know, products like The Witcher 3 and everything like that. And all the while you were trying to create Act Zero games and, you know, and make this really cool, innovative game like what how did you feel were you tired at the time i'm like you had to be doing a whole lot oh yeah you know i'm a workaholic a little bit <laughs> i think so uh i like when the the scale of the uh, of the job i or i want to of the of the goal the scale of the goal i want to achieve is is super big because <laughs> it gives me uh a p opportunity to work it for a long time and not to uh, look for a, a another new uh, goal uh, <laughs> for me the pressing are the moments when i uh, finish something and then i have to find some new uh, meaning uh, in my life uh, from scratch and uh, so uh, the scale of the of the project was was okay for me it, it uh, i like it and uh, uh, yeah of course i was tired during the <laughs> i've got like you know a few mental breakdowns and and stuff like that but that was a part of the process and that was something that makes life interesting it really does the ups and downs kind of come with the territory you know i like that um uh so let's talk about the game itself like mm -hmm. For the people who haven't heard of We the Refugees, can you introduce? Can you talk a little bit about what this game is? Yeah. Uh, so We the Refugees is a uh, that's gonna be my short pitch of the game. Mm -hmm. So We the Refugees is a uh, text-based RPG uh, inspired by uh, real stories of refugees I met in a Moria refugee camp on a Greek island of Lesbos. Uh, the game is. Uh, it's it's a non-linear story rich choose your own adventure kind of uh, a kind of a game uh, with a branching narratives multiple endings and uh, a lot of and i mean really a lot there are literally thousands of dialogue choices in in, in this game mm -hmm. and the script is super massive it's like 300,000 words and for example for to compare to compare the witcher 3 is like 450,000 words so we are like 60 maybe 70 percent of the Witcher 3 script and uh, single playthrough takes about 10 hours in the game but I think that there is enough content to for about 40 maybe maybe 35 maybe 40 hours uh, of, of content so you can play like three for maybe even five times uh, the game and you can still find some new roads some uh, meet some new npcs and and uh, explore the places and locations you uh, didn't realize are that are even in the game that is amazing sounds like a lot of replay value there i really want to so, yeah. yeah for sure it sounds like you're going to be reading a lot in this game and i love that it's very narrative heavy and you can oh, kind of yeah. see yeah, you can kind of see the inspiration with you as um your writing background really coming into play with the the narrative focus of this game. And I admire that. I want to ask you, though, like you mentioned that like this game was heavily inspired by um the refugees, like the yeah. the real life stories out there. What was it like finding out about those stories and how did you find out about this? Yeah, so um, it was about 2014th when I read about when i read one article in news about people who are drowning in the mediterranean sea while trying to get to europe uh, on a smuggling uh, smugglers boats and uh, it haunted me like for months this image and uh, and 
I I don't know because in my country in Poland there is a big anti-refugee policy, and I mean only refugees from uh, different uh, cultures like from Africa or Middle East. Uh, because, for example, refugees from Ukraine, uh, we are very friendly to them and we opened our homes to them. And there were like a million of refugees from 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 Ukraine and, and Poland after the war with with Russia. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, but in the case of the refugees from Middle East and Africa, the society was very hostile towards them and they didn't want to... Uh, to open their their houses for them and they didn't want even like 5,000 or 10,000 of people to from these countries to to came to Poland and it also made me feel a little bit ashamed because I didn't understand that why what's so wrong with those people for for my for people in, in my country so I've got this this feeling of being ashamed a little bit of for of my country and and this was one of the reasons that I thought that, okay, so nobody wants these people here in my country, but I want to understand them more and maybe to raise awareness about them. And I've also got this feeling that if I wouldn't uh, start to work on this subject, then probably in my country, nobody or very few people will. Uh, yeah. Will. We'll try to explore deeper the the subject of refugees. So that was at the beginning, and uh, yeah, at the beginning I was like reading a lot. I was really reading like thirty, maybe forty uh, nonfiction books about uh, refugees, about North Africa, Middle East, and and stuff like that. And uh, it took me about maybe two maybe three years uh, of, of research but of course I was not only reading I was also <laughs> uh, working somewhere and uh, and uh, having my normal life and and stuff like that but uh, yeah after this three maybe two maybe three years uh, we've got like 600 pages of script of the first version of the of the game and we made a prototype of the game based on the script and with this prototype, um, we went to the Moria refugee camp on a Greek island of, of Lesbos on an invitation from the HOPE project. There are a group of uh, volunteers who, who are uh, helping refugees for many years there. And uh, they, they were our hosts and guides through the, uh, to the refugee camp. And uh, we met a lot of refugees there, and we showed them the prototype of the uh, uh, of the game, and we also uh, s- discuss with them our ideas for the game, and they give us feedback, which was uh, very uh, sympathetic but also devastating. Yeah, uh, because yeah, I realize we realized then that uh, this first version of the game was basically based more mostly on our imaginations and on ter- theoretical knowledge and in this first version of the game uh, you played as a, one of the refugees who were uh, trying to get to Europe on a on a smuggling boat mm-hmm. but uh, I realized after this meeting with real refugees that even if I read for like, I don't know, 100 books about refugees and may I conduct a, a, a dozens of, of interviews with them, I wouldn't be able to to tell the story from the POV of the refugee. Because, yeah, for sure. Because I was, even when I was talking with them, I was all, I was on the, in the position of a journalist or a researcher. Yeah. Or somebody who is from a different uh, culture. perspective. Yeah, it's all you were on the outside looking in, so to speak. Yeah, so I wouldn't be able to, you know, like write a di- dialogue between two refugees alone mm-hmm. on the boat. Yeah, because yeah. I wouldn't be able to do it. So that was the moment when I realized that I have to change the assumptions of the game, and we decided that in the final version of the game, you play as a journalist who is making a research about about refugees. And uh, it, I, I thought that it would be a little bit more 
honest way to tell mm -hmm. the story because I wouldn't be trying to uh, to say that I can tell something in the name of the refugees because I couldn't and uh, yeah it's, but I, I can tell a lot how is it to uh, research the subject of the refugees for many years and then to confront your theoretical knowledge with the real refugees and meet them in person so this whole trip uh, this whole journey to moria refugee camp became like the foundation for the uh, main uh, and the final version of the game that's amazing um so just for people on the outside looking in who might not know about like the incidents leading up to the refugees the refugees exodus to greek like can you can you kind of like give us a, a little bit of a history lesson so to speak on why they were why they were actually refugees in greek to begin yeah, with sure. uh this uh so-called crisis uh because i don't li li like the phrase refugee crisis but mm -hmm. it got like a negative uh, connotations with the board refugee but uh, the so-called crisis uh, started mainly after the Syrian uh, civil war and uh, there was a moment when a lot of people uh, because of the war have to flee their country because it was a war zone and uh, uh, yeah i would say that syrian civil war was like the main reason but also there was there were a lot of you know like economical climate reasons political reasons in other countries than syria in north africa uh, there was a uh, you know in libya there was a uh, a big problem with uh, uh, Gaddafi. Uh, there was uh, uh, a, a lot of people were also pr prosecuted uh, uh, or harassed in their countries because of their beliefs or they uh, because I don't know maybe some were homosexuals and they uh, because of some religion uh, oppression uh, there they. Uh, have to flee from the country there was a lot of reason this is a super complex topic and yeah uh, yeah and, and one one of, one of the reasons i uh, i made this game was to uh, to research it a lot and then to uh, to present the conclusions uh, in a game mm -hmm. so like you know it's like i i read those like 30 40 books uh, mm -hmm. during research and then i uh, summarize the knowledge so you can as a player uh, learn in a, like 10 hours playthrough what i was <laughs> learning in like a few years <laughs> for sure for sure so when we play we the refugees we're going to kind of get that ingrained lesson on why a lot of these refugees are actually like um uh, why there's a big ex exodus to greek and yeah. into other places like that it's so it's also informative as well as like a fun play a fun playthrough of like this yeah, big yeah. rpg mm -hmm. it's gonna be uh, informative but one of my main uh, assumptions was that we don't want to force player to force players to be educated yeah and uh, that was that's why this in this game you could play in a very different ways. So you can be like a very uh, you can f feel a lot of empathy towards refugees, but mm -hmm. you can also play in a way of a some kind of a cynical uh, guy who is uh, just making his job, and uh, he this job is is an opportunity for him to make his career over the tragedy and the suffering of refugees. You can you can play that way if you want, uh, because uh, the game also explores a lot of uh, themes connected with uh, ethics in the work of a journalist. Like, mm -hmm. uh, what is more important? If is is it more important to write a good book, which will raise awareness of a lot of people, but you have to choose like some uh, personal information from private information from somebody who directly told you that he didn't or she didn't want to you to use this information in your book but mm -hmm. and now it's, it's 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 you know it's liquid yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> i like the term it's liquid it is like that that's a cool dynamic to have like 
the I guess you could say the morality choices of having yeah. something that is so personal. Um, whereas like there they might be given information that's strictly off the record, so to speak, but they still use that information to further their own careers. I like that because it adds a human human element to it because I'm like there are some people who are super opportunistic and there's also some people who are very much more on the compassionate side of things so I think that is a realistic lens into the human condition there um yeah and you know actually uh actually it was also one of the dilemmas we were uh, facing during making this game because uh, you know there was a lot of people who uh were uh, commenting our work in a way that you know we are using the suffering and trauma of 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 uh, of refugees uh, in order to make uh, in order to make a game and mm -hmm. make profit out of out of it so uh, it was a big subject during the uh, development of this game and uh, we were thinking a lot about it and you know at, at the in the end we are uh, my argument is all, all, all is always that uh, it's not going to be a commercial success, probably <laughs> because this is a niche uh, genre and uh, quite a niche subject. So if I wanted to make money uh, out of this game, then I would uh, make a different game, probably. Probably <laughs> completely different game. This is a very niche subject, like you said, and. One that, you know, like you said, is going to appeal to a very specific type of gamer um, versus like a game like you mentioned The Witcher, which is kind of more of a broad and more of a broad audience focus there. But, you know, like we the refugees, um, especially like this comes out May the 1st, uh, May the 1st, 2023. So what are you going to do to celebrate after this game is out? Um, We are planning some kind of a, a company party and, <laughs> uh, and uh, we want to invite everyone who were involved in the in the process of uh, of making this game and even that the game is rather minimalistic and and and, and not very big one but uh, it took so much time that there was so much people involved in the in the process during all these years that the party gonna be like I think quite big one. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. Uh, what what's gonna be the main dishes at this party? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's gonna be uh, probably uh, because the, on the first of May the the game will have a premiere. So I think that at the beginning of the May we will start to think about. Uh, uh, preparations for for this party that but makes now sense. the main focus for us is like you know there's a, this premiere coming and we are uh, fixing bugs and uh, and some little typos and uh, making this whole marketing effort together with publishers so this is where our main focus is right now i understand completely so let's let's go to that mark uh let's go back to sort of your main focus here like the game's coming up really soon um how how are you feeling about it? How how are you? You excited? Yeah, or is it more like I got so much work to do right now? Oh, it's surreal. It's mm -hmm. completely surreal because uh, there was so much moments during this process when I thought that uh, we never gonna finish this game. <laughs> that I don't know. This is a new situation for me. That's mm -hmm. it's gonna, the the end is so near and the shore is in the sight. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what to feel, actually. <laughs> I, I started to think about another game <laughs> because, I, as I said, I'm a workaholic and I'm, I'm pretty scared of this moment when uh, something is uh, finished. I understand. You, you like almost like you've gotten used to the storm. So like hearing yeah. the quiet after the storm, it almost feels all scary. It almost feels different. Yeah. 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 I understand. I understand. So we, the refugees, like you gave us the inspiration behind it. You gave us like the time estimate of how long it took you to kind of reach this long mile milestone. I want to ask you though, th this game is very dialogue heavy as well, right? Like yes. how long did it take to actually record all those lines of dialogue? Uh, 20 months of constant writing, like six days uh, a day uh, with, with, it was during a COVID lockdown. 
-hmm. and uh, I moved from the city uh, to the countryside for like two years and it took me yeah 20 months of uh, writing it like eight to ten hours a day and uh, six six days a week uh, and I, I super loved that time it was like my dream come true uh, I bet I bet that was you just got in the zone as a writer at that time I bet yeah yeah and you know it was like i made this company uh for that moment yeah mm -hmm. because i wanted to tell a story and nobody wants uh, to produce my story and now i i get what i wanted yeah <laughs> and, and and it was nice but my fiance she was not so super uh uh happy <laughs> about that because you know uh we moved to the countryside and it was like for her like a dream come true because you can be together with your fiance uh, mm -hmm. like seven uh 24 7 uh, uh but i was like in a mode of obsession with <laughs> this and she was like oh my god you are not even uh present like mm -hmm. uh, in the terms of your mind here and uh, I don't even have my friends here because they are all in the city. And what 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 should I do now? And, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. But it's, then we move back to the city. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's amazing. That's amazing. So I gotta ask you, like, this game's coming out for um, on PC first, right? Yeah. Yeah. Have you tried it on the Steam Deck yet? Uh, not yet, uh, okay. but we are thinking about it. Uh, at the beginning, there's going to be uh, only a version on a PC, on a Steam, and on GOG. Uh, uh, but uh, we get some tests with mobile versions, and it's possible uh, to make them. And yeah, but we are, we are going to make a decision about other platforms after the premiere and after receiving feedback to this to this game, because... Uh, if nobody will play it, then there's no reason to make it more, another uh, version, porting it to another uh, platform. I understand. I understand. So this game has a lot of different voice dialogues. It has um, it has a lot of different narrations. What's the sound like in this game? What's the soundtrack oh, like? The sound is uh, it's a 19 minutes of original soundtrack, which. Uh, uh, a music composer uh, called uh, Sandrax uh, composed this specially for, for this game. Uh, he was making, before that, he was making mostly uh, electronic ambient uh, music, mm -hmm. but uh, for for this project, he uh, it was quite interesting for him because uh, he, he explored a lot of... Uh, themes from the Arabic culture, African culture, and put them into his uh, his ambient electronic uh, um, style. Mm -hmm. And um, but you can still hear that this is the interpretation of the some some kind of a Europe European musician who is exploring these themes. This is not an original. Uh, African on, on Ara Arabic music, but this is like a Arabic uh, African uh, sounds from the POV of the European uh, musician, and this is actually coherent with the with the the theme game. of the game. Yeah. So yeah, I was just about to mention that it's like it's uh, you have so many elements to where it's like a it it just magnifies that overall theme of like. This isn't a tale from the perspective of a refugee. It's a tale of the perspective of an outsider who wants to highlight a story, highlight what's going on here, highlight a bigger issue. And the music is another reflection of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that theme. So first game coming out, May 1st, We the Refugees. You have a, you've been on this project for a very long time. I got to ask you, though. What was the biggest moment of like of celebration during the development process? That moment to where you were like, "Yes, this is this is making it. This is I'm gonna see this through." Uh, I think the moment when we obtain a budget for the for the game, mm -hmm. uh, because before it was in 2020, and before that it was uh, it was 
we, we struggle a lot to make it without the budget. And uh, I was a little bit naive and I thought that it would be possible to finish it. But uh, it turns out that it was not possible. And uh, uh, and we struggled a lot, a lot, a lot of times. And there was a moment when, when I thought that, okay, so if we didn't get, get a budget for it, then we have to uh bury this this project because it's it's gonna consume a more and more and more time and energy and at the end it's gonna be like uh super his if, even if we finish it it's gonna be like a super historical uh game uh, <laughs> about something which happens like 50 years ago and uh, that was not our aim because we want to tell something about the modern times and uh, yeah but when we received the budget it was as i said 2020 uh, it was like yeah that was the biggest celebration moment because this was the moment when i realized that all the efforts we take uh, during the previous years was not wasted and uh, and it and and i realized that this game is really going to to be finished some someday i love that i love that so um, one last thing i want to ask you about like details about the game is the art style this yeah. feels like so when i got hands-on with it at pax and then you know if you look at the trailer you can kind of see that it has these illustrations that kind of feel like almost like a magazine illustrations kind of like but also kind of like comic book style always um like yeah. in the way it's cell shaded in a way but like what was it like creating the art style for this game yeah actually we we decided we want to do it in a some kind of a comic style uh art uh quite early in the process of development because it was our intuition that there is uh, so much trauma and suffering uh, connected with the subject of refugees and uh, that we thought that uh, we have to contrast it uh, with with something bright and something uh, with this uh, with full of colors like a comic uh, art style and that at that moment it was only an intuition but it turns out that it was a good intuition because when we came to the moria refugee camp and i also was expecting that there would be like a lot of traumatizing things and it would be like a very gloomy experience in, in, in an existential way for me uh, but it turns out that uh, you know most of the people who are there are thousands of people and everyone in the refugee camp they got they, they got some tr kind of trauma because, mm -hmm. you know, they are fleeing from a country with a reason, yeah? And uh, and it turns out that uh, most of these people I met there, they are, they, they don't want, to, they, they, they can talk about their trauma and stuff like that, but it's rather like, okay, let me tell you, my trauma is this and this and this, and then 15 minutes later, uh, he 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 or she was eager to have some small talk about uh, normal things like you know like a uh, like, you know to to discuss the sports like a Champions League uh, in in football or or uh, or to to have a discussion about some TV series uh, they mm -hmm. watch and stuff like that and uh, and and there was a lot of laugh laugh and. Uh, and and joy in these people and they and they really want to celebrate these moments to of meeting a new new person and uh, and uh, yeah and and i think that this art style this comic art style uh, also tells the story that uh, your expectation is that the game about refugees would be like very gloomy thing very dark thing but uh, we've got a art style which is very full of colors and 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 bright and uh, it also tells this story i think it does it, it has a it almost highlights that theme of hope hope in darkness you know and i i, I love that it has like a 
like I said, that hope and darkness kind of theme. And I like the way like it's illustrated and the way like it's presented because like there are there are like dark moments where you can see the shadows and you see like the shadows around like different things. And I think that is almost like almost highlighting that condition that that they that they're in. But like you all also see like moments of brightness and joy and almost like a, a contrast of like pops of color that kind of give you like that feeling that everything might be dark now, but it's leading towards that light moment. And yeah. I, I kind of, I love that kind of theme in games and I love that deeper meaning that you have in the art style here. So I wanted to shout you out for that because that is a really cool aspect that I think a lot of people are probably going to miss out on when they play the game. But before we go though, I and you give your last pitch on why, on who we are, uh, we the refugees are for, I really want to ask you one question. And this is a major question here. Are you ready? Because I'm going to ask you a series of fun pop culture questions just okay. so the audience can kind of feel you out a little bit. We want to get to know you as a person a little bit more. So here we go. All right. So are you a big pizza fan? Uh, yeah, I like not a big fan, but I like it. Okay. Uh, well, okay. What, yeah. What's what's your favorite topping on pizza? Uh. I like a uh, simple margarita, but with olive oil. Good olive oil on a simple, minimalistic pizza. I like that. I like that. All right. So are you a fan of football, like as in soccer? Oh, actually, uh, this is my guilty pleasure. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, and uh, I'm watching uh, football during these national competitions every two years, like during Euro and mm -hmm. World Cup. And uh, maybe not the, I'm not a, uh, a big fan of the uh, club uh, mm -hmm. competition, but on the national mm -hmm. level, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> I, I, I'm also betting a little bit. I like that. I like that. So I, I take it you, you're um, rooting for your national team over there? Yeah, but it is very tragic, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very much full of lows right now, huh? You know, the, the Nash, Polish national team is full of talents which are wasted. It's mm -hmm. like it, it, it's like you have like a player who are 9 out of 10, 8 out of mm -hmm. 10. And when you s sum up all the talents, it's like 2 mm -hmm. out of 10, which is like a <laughs> super stupid and absurd and paradoxical equation. But mm -hmm. this is how the national team of Poland works. Man, that's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. So... What so you were a writer for a very long time? Ha, were you an active gamer during that time frame as well? What do you play a yeah, lot of video yeah, games? Yeah, uh, I was a gamer like uh, from from childhood, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, and I play a lot of games. But I would say that the first game that uh, that really changed my my, my life was a uh, Heroes of Might and Magic Three. Okay. I even was a part of the community in Poland, uh, and every year we met for like seven days in some uh, in some little town in Poland, and we play the tournaments of the Heroes of Might and Magic and uh, discuss the abilities and stuff like that. And it, and I was there like for ten years in a row. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it was a big part of my life, and I made a lot of friends there. Some of them are still my best friends, and yeah. And That's then there was there was a, uh, a, a there were, I got a lot of love to the uh, or maybe a lot of addiction to the games from uh, Paradox Studio. I mean, oh. uh, yeah. grand strategy games like Hearts of Iron, Europa Universalis, or Stellaris. And oh, all. I love Stellaris. Uh -huh. They're so good. It is so yeah. good. So, are you still a pretty big gamer now? Yeah, yeah, but mostly now I'm mostly playing uh, uh, narrative games with uh, mm -hmm. a lot of story and and uh, because I'm I'm pretty afraid of this uh, addictive uh, games with a very addictive gameplay loop like like from Stellaris because mm -hmm. uh, it took so much time it's you know and and the the activity is mostly repetitive yeah. So, I'm afraid of this kind of games. I love them, but uh, I'm I'm trying mostly focus on the games with a with a storyline and and some uh, plot and some story to to discover. Now, so, what is your favorite like narrative based games? What's some Disparity. of the 
obviously. Which one? Disco Elysium, obviously. Oh, it's so good. It is so good. Yes. It is yes, really good. Yes, I played like three times and uh, actually I would say that it influenced my writing style for the games uh, a little bit or maybe not a little bit uh, <laughs> big, big influence uh, because I love this meta contextual style of Disco Elysium where... <clears throat> Uh, anything can ha can happen, and mm -hmm. uh, there is so it is so rich game with so much uh, choices and and uh, actually the people who play Disco Elysium and try We the Refugees are pretty surprised that the the writing style in the game with with a you know serious game about serious subject got this kind of a uh, dark humor which is also uh uh in disco elysium yeah it's a trademark of disco elysium for sure for sure so are you more of a pc gamer or are you more of a console gamer uh when it comes to the games uh, which are like uh, text-based games uh, mm -hmm. i'm mostly a pc gamer but uh when you, when it comes to AAA games like uh, I like uh, you know Red Dead Redemption or The Witcher or Dead Stranding or The Last of Us Part One and Two, I'm play I'm playing it only on a PlayStation because uh, <laughs> the experience is much better. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. So I want to ask you though, um, like let's get to the final pitch of the the game. Who are who should play We the Refugees? What type of gamer? Uh, no, I mean mostly people who 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 are in, into uh, story rich games, choose your own adventure, uh, RPGs, and uh, and uh, and the games where your choices uh, really matters. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I would say that uh, paradoxically, uh, Disco Elysium players. Uh, <laughs> would like this game uh, because of the writing style and because of the protagonist in this game who is like a, you know, a wannabe journalist, but he's not like a uh, expert uh, on the on the matter, uh, mm -hmm. not like a, a war correspondent who was like for the last 15 years living in a war zone and, and is uh, feeding on the adrenaline. Uh, it's the, 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 the protagonist here is like a normal person guy who is like 30 years old and he knows something about refugees and made some kind of a little research but it's gonna be this his first time when he's confronting the subject uh, uh, face to face mm -hmm. and uh, meet refugees face to face and uh, and he he's not a, a professional in in a uh, with he, do he doesn't know the professional uh, journalistic uh, uh, tools uh, mm -hmm. that uh, could be used. And he's like like a, a little bit child in a fog, uh, yeah. trying to discover how to uh, not only re make a research about refugees, but how to even do this kind of a journalistic job. That's really cool. That's really intriguing. So... Everyone, if you like narrative-based games, if you like games with a rich storyline, if you like games like Disco Elysium, you should definitely check out We the Refugees. It is coming to Steam on May the 1st. It's coming to GOG PC, everywhere PC, on May the 1st. This has been Andrew. I've been Sebastian. You should definitely go check this game out. It's absolutely incredible. I got to go hands-on with it at PAX. I can attest. You're going to love it, especially if you're a story-centric gamer who really loves like really strong narratives so in the meanwhile andrew before we go where can the good people find you uh people can find me uh in poland at the address <laughs> no no okay <laughs> uh, uh i'm uh you can find me on the twitter we've got like a twitter act zero games or on facebook also act zero games and we've got uh we are posting a lot of also on on the reddit uh, and on Steam, obviously, you can find us uh, on uh, We the Refugees Ticket to Europe uh, Steam page. Yeah, of course. Everyone, all those links will be in the description of this episode. So all you have to do is just listen to the episode, go down in the description, click on that, hit the wish list button because our pre order button because this is coming out really soon. Um, I think time of recording this is like 
for like this is April 7th. So this was less than a month away. Andrew, you got a lot of work to do, so I'm not going to hold you too much longer. You got to go fix some bugs. You got to go do a lot, some final testing, and you got to go figure out how y'all are going to celebrate because I know the party is going to be fun. But in the meanwhile, I want to thank you so much for being on the episode. It was really fun having you. It was really fun talking about We the Refugees, and I can't wait for more people to get hands on with the game. Thank you so much for being on the show, Andrew. Thank you. Thanks. And uh, I I have to go to feed my cat. And <laughs> this is also one of my uh, duties right now. And yeah, and thank you for the invitation. It was super, super nice to, to meet you. And uh, as I said, it was like my first podcast in, uh, uh, in English. So uh, I will always remember that. <laughs> you did very well. You did very well. Your English is very good, by the way. Thanks. <laughs> uh, so everyone i've been sebastian that's been andrew and until next time peace stay gaming and see you on the next one bye everyone thank you bye hey thank you so much for watching the video if you like the video hit that like button also for more videos just like this one go ahead and hit that subscribe button right here thanks again for watching the video and for more like it stay right here at the pro nerd report channel so that's a wrap for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like the video, don't forget to hit that like button. Also hit the subscribe button for more videos just like this one. I also want to let you know about the single player experience discord server. It's a perfect place for single player gamers to talk about the good single player games that they've been playing lately and to get video game recommendations. Think of it kind of like a book club for single player gamers. The link to join will be in the description. Once you're in, feel free to share your video game backlog list, talk about the good single player games you've been playing, or give your feedback on the show. If you have a game you think should be recommended and should be reviewed, let me know about it right there. Before we go, I just want to thank you once again for listening to today's episode. Stay safe, stay gaming, and I hope to catch you in the next one. Peace.